So here we are at a point I wasn't sure we were ever going to reach. This is the final installment of Project 55. Our 1993 Cobra is together, it's finished. We met our goal, we got it to Mustang week. I mean, no way I could have done this without this man right here. We've had plenty of help along the way, but we did it, hey, it's here. It's done it. I know we struggled a lot. We ran into a lot of few issues. A lot of late we, nights, <laughs> early you got, mornings. You got upset a couple times, but we got through it. We bought all the parts we needed, and look at it, it's stunning. I mean, the car, I couldn't be happier with how this car came out. I mean, I've wanted one of these as long as I can remember. I've been lucky enough to have a lot of Mustangs in my life. This one was a bucket list. I've always wanted a 93. I still look at it sometimes and can't believe a car this nice is mine. I mean, we got a couple little things we yeah. still got to figure out on it, but we said we'd get it done for Mustang week, and we did. Now, if you've been following this series since the beginning, like I said many, many times, a Teal 93 Cobra is a Mustang I have wanted since they came out. I remember seeing these cars brand new on the showroom. That age, I couldn't afford one, but I always, always wanted one. And then again, I knew about this car for a couple years before I got it. I was thankful to be able to make the deal and be able to help with Brendan and several others bring this car back. When the 93 Cobra came out, the second I saw one, I wanted one. I saw a teal one on the showroom floor in the town that I was from, stopped in to look at it, and fell in love with the car. At the time, I couldn't afford to trade my car in, even though I really wanted to. So I'm like, ah, you know what, I'll wait a few years down the road, and eventually I'll get myself a 93 Cobra. Well, it took a long, long time, but I finally got one, and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. The car's got quite a bit of history behind it. I mean, the mileage we're guessing is 170,000. It was in Maryland, it was in Florida. The car was found by a good friend of mine, Michael Johnson, a few years ago. Now, he works for the magazines and he had found it. It kind of put the word out that, hey, I found this 93 Cobra. It's really worn out, it's rough, but it's all there and it's definitely worth restoring. Now, at the time, I wasn't in the market, but thankfully my friend Adam from Revolution Auto was. And I knew about it for years. I knew he had it. Every time I went to the shop, I used to joke with him about selling it to me someday. And then the plan is just aligned. I had gotten rid of my Mystic Cobra. I was looking for a Fox body. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna call Adam and say, hey, would you, will, would you be willing to sell me the 93? And, and I got him on the phone. We talked for about an hour and we're able to make a deal. I'm used to pulling all this stuff apart, taking it all apart, I'm like just doing race car life and ripping everything out, not putting anything back in. And like my Fox body, Bill seen and ridden with me. It was just bare bones, just race car seats, just a big old engine and just had fun. I didn't care about the interior, didn't care about the paint. But for this one, it was different. We took our time, we cleaned up everything, we put interior in it, which I don't even know what that is. You know, there were a lot of obstacles to this build. And like I said, I'm, I'm no stranger to working on cars. I know things happen, I know you're in the challenges, but you know, this one definitely stressed me on quite a few occasions. I mean, the stupidest thing I ever did was pick an end date. I mean, restorations, if you're doing one, just allow it to get done when it gets done. Don't pick a date like I did because it just adds a lot of stress. I mean, the, we really basically did a full restoration of this car in six months, and that's a short time. I mean, this should take a year to year and a half minimum. Six months to get it done, painted, fixed up, welding, engine built, it's a struggle. I mean, but I love the deadlines. It gives you that, like, that little boost of energy, like, okay, we gotta get the thing done. I didn't think it was worth doing a full, what we'll call, you know, nut and bolt correct restoration. I wanted to build it, kind of period correct. So if I had bought this 93 Cobra back in 93 when I first saw it, what would I have done to it? I probably would have done a small supercharger, maybe some gears and some exhaust. So that was my initial plan was just to do that. But working with some of the vendors, we have some great vendors that were all about helping out with Project 55 and the project kind of spiraled a little bit. I mean, I was gonna clean up and paint the engine bay. Well, Brandon convinced me, you know what? Let's smooth it out, make it more of a show car look and I'm so glad we did it. It was a lot of work, but it was absolutely worth it. And the same thing with suspension and brakes. I mean, lowering springs would have been fine. Ibox stepped up, helped us out with some coilovers, and the suspension's much, much better than I ever imagined. And the same thing with the Bear brakes. I mean, Bear built a set of brakes for this car they don't even produce yet, just to help us work with this project, and they work stunningly well. I mean, the brakes on my boss are nowhere near as good as the ones on this 93 Cobra. And that's kind of how the project sort of spiraled. I mean, we did the Savini hood because the stock hood was destroyed, upgraded the lighting, and then working with TMI, they want to see me do a nice custom interior as opposed to just a stock boring interior. And again, everything came together for a finished product that I'm really proud of and really thankful for. Now, I've seen people comment on the video asking me about why did I do this, why did I do that? I mean, like I said, I had a vision for the car. I mean, it ended up being a little more modified than I planned, but to me, I feel it really fits a 93 Cobra. We took what Ford built and, you know, made it a little bit better. Our engine's a little bigger, we have a little more horsepower, we have a little better braking, a little better handling, a little better stereo. I mean, we pretty much took everything we could 
and maybe just tweaked it a little bit, but I still feel the car keeps the soul of the 93 Cobra. So, I mean, we appreciate all of our viewers. We know a lot of you guys have been following this along. We've gotten comments on social media, you know, watching this build, can't wait to, you know, to see the car actually finished and done. And here it is. And you know what, the car looks great. The best thing about a car like this is driving it. So let's take it for a ride. So driving a car like this obviously brings back a ton of memories for me. Yeah, you know, I had a lot of Fox bodies when I was younger. I had some nice ones. I had a supercharged one in the past. But it's like, you forget what it's like to drive a Fox Bot. I mean, there's just something raw and fun about these cars. You know, the, the S550 is like a luxury car these days. Even the S197 and S95 is drive a million times better. You know, these cars, the chassis is not as good. And there's, but there's just something about them. There, there, there's something about a Fox body. You know, we do Jeeps here now at CJ's. And one of the common things people say all the time is, oh, the Jeep thing you wouldn't understand. Boxes are kind of the same way. You either get it or you don't. I mean, this one's pretty quiet inside. We dynamated it, everything's new. We try to make sure we put it together right, but it's still got a rattle here and there. I got a couple little things I got to fix on it. But it's just amazing to be driving this car. And between the cam and the blower, man, it, it, it just makes all the right sounds. plenty quick uh, we did put the car on the dyno and uh, my mistake I put a mass air meter on that was way too small so we were pegging the mass air meter by only 4200 rpm still made just 360 370 I forget but it was one right in that neighborhood which is still plenty of power I mean that that's still good power for a car this light car is still fast still responsive still pulls like it's supposed to and you know we'll get that meter swapped out get something installed you know, we're gonna go with a an SCT big air 3000 which much much larger meter that should give me plenty of airflow and it should make mid to low fours which is at the tire honestly right where I was hoping to be that's plenty of power for a car like this I'm not building it as a race car it was built to be a fun fun street car and that's exactly what we built it to do oh, these brakes are amazing I said I'm trying to like you know relive my youth but to a point yeah i'm old enough now that i can say that i'm actually trying to do that and that's kind of what we're doing with this car well i've said a million times now i've had plenty of fox bodies in the past i've obviously had a lot of mustangs but a 93 cobra has always been on the list and you know, i walk out in the shop in my garage and see this thing sitting there and sometimes it's still amazing me that this is my car. And yeah, man, the handling, the car feels nice and tight. The brakes, I can't say enough about. I mean, they're, they're ridiculous how well this thing stops. So I got a rattle in the trunk somewhere, I got to figure out, and a couple other little things. But given how quickly this car came together, the fact that it runs and drives as well as it does with as little problems as it has is, is pretty amazing realized I left half of the strap for the sunroof laying in the spare tire well so that's probably what that rattle is but the car drives smooth even with the cam in it it's you know it's got that nice low idle that I was looking for but drivability is really really good and a lot of people question the motor why did I you know not do a stroke or why didn't I at least do this do that you know I built it the way I wanted it you know that I, I wanted a, a solid reliable small block wasn't looking to make crazy power. I honestly one point was going to even stick with the stock crank, but given the mileage and you know we have a good relationship with SCAT, we made sense to upgrade while we could. Uh, you know, we said this is, you know, calling this the final episode. It's the final episode of the build. The, this car, there, there's still some other things I want to do with it down the road. Right? There's some other upgrades I'll probably end up making to it. And, you know, I said the goal now though is it's done, it runs, it drives, it looks great. We can get out, have some fun with it. And maybe over the winter, and a couple more things we might be looking at.